In the 19th year of King Nebuchadnezzar, King of Babylon, Nebuzaradan, the captain of the guard, birthed the house of the Lord. And all the army of the Chaldeans that were with him break down the walls of Jerusalem round about. In Matthew chapter 24, Jesus referred to the destruction of the temple, described as the abomination of desolation, as a sign of his coming and the end of the world. And Jesus said unto them, See ye not all these things? Verily I say unto you, There shall not be left here one stone upon another that shall not be cast down. And as he sat upon the Mount of Olives, the disciples came unto him privately, saying, Tell us, when shall these things be, and what shall be the sign of thy coming and the end of the world? Then in verse 15, Jesus hearkens back to the prophet Daniel, who lived during the time when the temple was physically destroyed in 587 BC. And Jesus uses that destruction as an example of the abomination of desolation when the New Testament church is spiritually destroyed. When ye therefore shall see the abomination of desolation spoken of by Daniel the prophet stand in the holy place, whoso readeth, let him understand. When we go back to the book of Daniel, specifically chapter 12, we discover that the wise will understand the 1,290 days of the abomination of desolation, because God will increase knowledge at the time of the end. Verse 4. But thou, O Daniel, sharp the words and seal the book, even till the time of the end. Many shall run to and fro, and knowledge shall be increased. Then in verse 9, Daniel informs us that this information was sealed to the time of the end. And he said, Go thy way, Daniel, for the words are closed up and sealed to the time of the end. Moreover, in verse 10, God warns that the wicked shall do wickedly, and none of the wicked shall understand. Many shall be purified and made white and tried, but the wicked shall do wickedly, and none of the wicked shall understand, but the wise shall understand, reminding us of the five wise virgins who knew the hour and were ready to meet the Lord at midnight. Similarly, the wise men were aware of the time of Christ's first coming in 7 BC, while figures like Herod, the Pharisees, and Sadducees remained ignorant. 2,000 years later, in 1994, those who are wise will also comprehend the 1,290 days of the abomination of desolation. And from the time that the daily sacrifice shall be taken away, and the abomination of desolation set up, there shall be a thousand two hundred and ninety days. How do we compute the one thousand two hundred and ninety days? To compute the one thousand two hundred and ninety days, two principles from the biblical calendar are applied. Firstly, the day for a thousand years principle from Ezekiel chapter 4 verse 6 is used allowing us to interpret the 1,290 days as 1,290 years. Secondly, the principle extending 1,290 years into the future uses two significant events involving 430 years, a factor of 1,290 years. Notably, Israel's 430-year period in Egypt, lasting from 1877 BC to 1447 BC, advancing twice by 430 years from 1447 BC, we come to 587 BC, the year the Babylonians destroyed the temple and left it desolate over a period of 70 Sabbaths of years. And so, God is using the 430-year projection into the future as the precedence for us to project the 1,290-year multiples into the future. For instance, we can project future periods of 1,290 years, starting once again at 1877 BC, a time of great affliction or great tribulation in Egypt resulting in three sequences of 1,290 years, ending in 1994, the beginning of the Great Tribulation, when the Abomination of Desolation was set up. 
similarly tracking two sequences of 1,290 years from 587 BC, when the Temple of Israel was destroyed over a period of 70 Sabbaths of years, we come to 1994, when the New Testament church was spiritually destroyed after the abomination of desolation was set up during the Great Tribulation Sabbaths. If 1994 is a time of spiritual war in the church, we should expect to find other dates related to it in the context of a spiritual war. Interestingly, God gives us 3,000-year watches in Scripture, aligning with the year 1994 during times of spiritual conflict. For instance, tracking back to 2007 BC, when Jacob and Esau, symbolizing two warring nations, struggled in the womb, we reach a span of 4,000 years to 1994. Moreover, starting from 1007 BC, the onset of King David's reign over Judah, marked a long war with King Saul, brings us to 3,000 years toward 1994. Finally, from 7 BC, marked by the birth of Jesus and King Herod's attempt to kill him as an infant, we count 2,000 years to 1994. This evidence suggests that 1994 parallels the 1,290 days of the Abominations of Desolation as a time of spiritual conflict between Satan's ministers in the church and God's elect to provide us Jacob, according to Romans chapter 9. It's plain to see that God has ordained various events within the timeline of the biblical calendar to point to future events involving God's judgment on the church in the lead-up to His return on Judgment Day. If the abomination of desolation was set up in 1994, why does the Bible say that the daily sacrifice was taken away during the 1,290 days as well as the 2,300 days of Daniel chapter 8? Well, in Daniel chapter 12, God is simply informing us that the abomination of desolation was set up in 1994. However, in Daniel chapter 8, the daily was taken away over a period of 2300 days, that is from 1994 to the year 2000, because the church cast down the truth. We begin in verse 11. Yea, he magnified himself even to the prince of the host, that is Christ, and by him the daily sacrifice was taken away, and the place of his sanctuary, that is the church, was cast down. And an host was given him against the daily sacrifice by reason of transgression, and it cast down the truth to the ground, and it practiced, and it prospered. Then I heard one saint speaking to another saint, and said unto that certain saint which spake, how long shall the vision be concerning the daily sacrifice and the transgression of desolation to give both the sanctuary and the host to be trodden underfoot? And he said unto me, Unto two thousand three hundred days, then shall the sanctuary be cleansed. What is the spiritual meaning of the removal of the daily sacrifice, and how is the sanctuary cleansed? This concept aligns with Hebrews chapter 10, verse 26, which warns that forsaking the truth results in no more sacrifice for sin, but only a fearful looking for of judgment and fiery indignation, which shall devour the adversaries. In what way did the churches cast down the truth? Well, many churches ordain women in violation of 1 Corinthians chapter 14 and 1 Timothy chapter 2, which prohibits women from teaching men in the church. Moreover, over the last 50 years, we have seen a significant rise in false prophets coming with signs and wonders to include dreams, tongues, and visions, wherein Satan masquerades as an angel of light. These false miracles will be so deceptive that they could almost deceive the very elect, according to Matthew chapter 24, verse 24. In 2 Thessalonians chapter 2, we read, God will send them a strong delusion, causing them to believe in these lying signs and wonders, because they received not the love of the truth. Hence, the daily sacrifice was taken away, because they cast down the truth during the 2300 days. Consequently, God commands His people to cleanse their temples by turning away from these false doctrines and lying signs and wonders in the church. 
And in the year 1999-2000, God initiated His program to bring His elect out of the church by commanding them to come out of Babylon, which became a habitation of devils, 